Hi, in this video, I'm going to explain what flash loans are and how they can be used to profit and save money on certain transactions. Even though flash loans were introduced on the Ethereum network in early 2020, they are still very much in development and especially for the regular retail investor. As always, nothing in this video is financial advice and you should always do your own research. Let's get started. Let's start off by explaining what exactly is a flash loan. I'll first go through it conceptually, then I'll use examples to explain further in detail. So this is the process that occurs during a flash loan. So the first step in this process is that I borrow any amount of an asset without collateral. That means I can borrow up to millions of dollars worth of, let's say, Bitcoin without posting anything for collateral for the lender to hold. The second step is to do something with that Bitcoin or that asset that I've borrowed. Uh, this could be investing or this could be doing some sort of transaction with it, whatever I want to do. And then the last step is to pay back the loan, or in this case, pay back the Bitcoin that I have borrowed. So a couple of characteristics are flash loans are done all in the same transaction. So those three steps that I previously talked about is done within seconds. So borrowing, doing something with asset, and then paying back the loan happens within seconds. And the second, they're not technically free. Yes, you can borrow millions without collateral, but the borrower still needs to pay a fee to borrow it from the lender. And on Aave, that is 0.09%, and they have to pay the gas fees. I'm going to quickly go through what a traditional collateralized loan looks like, just so there's some context. So let's say I want to borrow some money from the bank, and one way I can do this is I can give my house up as collateral. I allow the bank to take my home as collateral, and in return, they give me some money to borrow. And usually this amount of money is less than the value of the house or of the collateral that they're holding. This means the loan is an over collateralized loan. Then with that money, I can use it to do something. Uh, I can invest, I can pay bills, etc. And then once I'm done spending the money or investing, then I have to pay back the loan to the bank with interest. Once I pay back the loan, then my bank will unlock my collateral and return my house to me. That's how a collateralized loan happens in traditional finance. And this takes a lot of paperwork, has a lot of friction, etc. There are many examples in DeFi of over collateralized loans. This is just one example. I can give my BE up as collateral to Anchor, borrow UST, and then do something with the UST, and then pay back the UST with interest to get back my collateral. This is the analog on DeFi of the traditional collateralized loan. And this process here is much quicker with much less friction and works much better. So for a flash loan, I don't need to provide any collateral. I go to Aave and then ask them to lend me some ETH. I do something with the ETH and then repay back the ETH all in one transaction. And this happens within seconds. So if this makes sense, that's great. But why would someone want to use a flash loan? What are they going to do with the borrowed asset at this second step? There are a few things that I can do with a flash loan, and I'll cover three of them. The first thing is to participate in arbitrage. And arbitrage is the process of profiting from price differences between markets. I'll go through an example just to explain how this works. So let's just say in this example, I found a 1% ETH price difference on Uniswap versus on SushiSwap. And also assume that I don't have much ETH to play with, so I need to take a flash loan from Aave. So I'll go to Aave and borrow one ETH, and I'll just say one ETH for, for simplicity. And I'll go to Uniswap where ETH is worth 1% more than it's worth on SushiSwap, and immediately sell the borrowed ETH from my flash loan. As a result, I get back 101 USDT. The next step is to go to SushiSwap and use my 101 USDT, and just use 100 of that to buy back the one ETH that I sold. Now... I have one ETH in my possession, as well as one USDT. The last step is to pay back my one ETH to Aave and pocket the one USDT. Obviously, this is a very scaled down example, but using the flash loan, I can scale this up to say borrow a thousand ETH and then do the same process and then pocket the USDT from the price difference. So this is a very popular way of utilizing flash loans and that's a profit from arbitrage. The next thing I can do with the flash loan is debt refinancing. So in this example, let's say I've opened up a CDP or a collateralized debt position and I've borrowed DAI for 6%, but then I find a better opportunity for a lower interest rate on borrowing the DAI. Let's say for this CDP, I have a position on Compound and I am using ETH as collateral and I've borrowed some DAI from Compound and this negative indicates that I owe Compound some money and they're down some die and i'm holding some die and i'm borrowing it at six percent rate 
Then assume that I have found on another platform that I can borrow die for much less, say 3%. I don't want to close my position on compound yet because I'm utilizing the die to do something. So I can't close the position on compound without repaying the die because I'm already using it to do something. What can I do in this scenario? So that is where a flash loan comes in. So what I can do is that I can go to Ave, take out a flash loan and borrow die to pay back compound. So now they have their die back and because they have their die back, they can release my collateral to me and I receive back my ETH. Then I take my ETH and go to the other platform that I found the better interest rate on borrowing DAI for, and I deposit the ETH in as collateral. And in this case, I'm, I'm using Iron Bank. And let's say on Iron Bank, I can borrow DAI for 3%. Then I can use that borrowed DAI that I'm not doing anything with from Iron Bank, and I use that DAI to pay back Ave. So my final collateralized deposition looks like this. I'm borrowing the DAI at 3%. I owe... Iron Bank, some die indicated by this negative, and I'm using my ETH as collateral on Iron Bank. To summarize, I initially had my collateral on Compound and borrowed some die from Compound at a 6% rate. Since I found a better opportunity to borrow die and I didn't want to move my die that I've previously borrowed, I can refinance my loan by using a flash loan. Therefore, I'm moving my Ethereum from Compound to Iron Bank in order to get the reduced borrow rate on my die. The last thing that I'm going to go over that I can use a flash loan for is swapping collateral. So let's take, for example, that I have the same CDP opened as before on Compound, but instead of using Ethereum as my collateral, I want to use BAT tokens. And maybe because BAT tokens, I can borrow for cheaper than I can borrow with ETH. And the same thing applies here where I don't want to repay my DAI to close my CDP because it's locked up in an investment or something. Then what I can do is utilize a flash loan to swap the collaterals. So I'll go to Aave and use a flash loan to borrow some Ethereum and then immediately go to Uniswap and swap the ETH with BAT. Now I owe Aave some Ethereum, which I have to pay back later. The next step is to go to Compound and swap out the collateral. So first I would add the BAT tokens to the CDP and then I'm not at risk of liquidation. And then after that, I pull out the Ethereum that I previously used as collateral. The last step is then to pay back Aave with the Ethereum that I previously used as collateral on Compound. And so my finalized CDP position looks like this. So that's the last scenario in which a flash loan is useful. Swapping collaterals and CDPs without having to unlock the die that I'm using elsewhere. So how practical are flash loans for regular retail investors? As far as arbitrage goes, it's a lot more difficult now since the advent of flash loans because the arbitrage opportunities are a lot harder to come by just because flash loans have made the markets a lot more efficient as well as developers utilizing flash loans to to profit from arbitrage and then initially these flash loans were actually made for developers because it actually requires smart contracts to take advantage of let's say Aave's flash loan function and then write logic on top of that to do the other stuff like swapping collateral or debt refinancing on different platforms. So how can a regular retail person take advantage of flash loans? Well, there's not many ways to do that unless you are also a developer, but there are some platforms that are coming up like Furrow Combo that are making flash loans a little bit more accessible to less tech savvy people. And I'll just show a little bit of what that looks like and what I think can be really cool for retail investors moving forward. This is the Furrow Combo platform where I'll be recreating the arbitrage example. And first I navigate to the create page and then click on this block icon with the plus sign in the middle. Then Furrow Combo brings up all these platforms that I can connect to. For example, Curve, Compound, Maker, and of course Aave because that is where the flash loan block lives. So imagine this as being building blocks to the entire flash loan process. Instead of using flash loan as the first step, the way Furrow Combo works is it has to start with step two, which is for this ar arbitrage example, I'm going to swap a token on Uniswap. If you remember in the example, there was a price difference between the Uniswap market and the SushiSwap market. So the second step was to use the, I'm going to use wrapped Bitcoin in this case instead of ETH because of the UI here. So I'm going to use the borrowed wrapped Bitcoin from the flash loan and I'm going to sell it to USDT on Uniswap. Then I'm gonna click set. 
That's essentially the first transaction in the step for the arbitrage. Then I click add again. And then I want to go to sushi swap because that's where the price difference is theoretically and then click swap token. I'm going to swap from USDT back to wrapped Bitcoin so that I can pay back the flash null. And ideally here, I'm not going to use a previous input, but instead I'm, it's going to be something less than this USDT because that's where the price difference occurred. And if there's an arbitrage opportunity, then this is actually going to be one wrapped Bitcoin instead of whatever this is. I'm going to click set. And then the last step here is to incorporate the flash loan block. So if I click this again, and then go to off A, and then click flash loan, and then I will set that I want wrap Bitcoin from Ave. I want to borrow that in order to complete this arbitrage example. And in this example, I'm using one wrap Bitcoin to do the arbitrage. So I set that here, and then click set. And then the last step is to click and drag this block all the way to the beginning. So this is the entire arbitrage example shown with wrapped Bitcoin and implemented from Furrow Combo. All that's left to do, if I indeed found a price difference in the wrapped Bitcoin, is to click approve and all these transactions should execute. If Aave calculates that I cannot actually repay the wrapped Bitcoin back, because I missed out on the arbitrage opportunity or whatever, I wasn't quick enough, then this entire transaction would not happen and I would not borrow any wrapped Bitcoin from Aave. Instead, I will be out and down the premium I had to pay for the flash loan on Aave as well as the transaction fees in gas fees. So that's how this works on Furrow Combo. I'm pretty sure you can recreate the other examples as well for debt refinancing and collateral swapping. But just keep in mind that this is a beta software and it's highly unstable. There could be bugs in this. So be careful if you're playing around with this software. And that's all I have for flash loans. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you learned something in the comments below. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe. As always, stay safe, stay safe, and thanks for watching.